Restoration Life family, we're so happy you joined us today. Our prayer is that this message speaks directly to your life and has restoration power. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on our upcoming messages. Now, let's take a listen. I want to say hi to everybody that's on the balcony. How's, how's the balcony doing up there? Nice. And, and over in the overflow room, we just were over there just a couple minutes ago saying hi to everybody. It's so awesome to have everybody together here on Resurrection Sunday. What a blessing it is to come together to celebrate here at Restoration Life. And um, I, I remember uh, just a couple of uh, months ago, I was, uh, I was in Washington, D.C. representing our church at, at the National Day of Prayer. And I had picked up a couple of suits because that was the attire uh, that you had to wear at, this, at these events. And, and I got really sick while I was out there and I couldn't wear any of the suits. So I asked Roxanne, I was like, hey, do you think I should wear a suit on Sunday? She's like, really? You want to wear a suit? And I was like, well, yeah, I got like three new suits and I've not really gotten to wear them. And she goes, well, I mean, whatever floats your boat, go for it. Like, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and so this morning I was, I put on the suit and my grandson Jackson goes, wow, Papa, you, you look like a real pastor. I was like, shut up, get your mom to pick you up right now. I was like, what, what does a real pastor look like? My goodness. <laughs> it's all good though. They got grace. There's just a lot of grace on those boys. Uh, but if you're new to Restoration Life, is there anybody here that's brand new, maybe for your very first time? Would you just raise your hand? Hey, welcome. Honored, welcome, welcome. Anybody? Have, hey, welcome, 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 welcome. It's good to have you. Welcome over there. Welcome. Hey, come on. We're happy to have you with us today. Today is a very special day. And I know that for a lot of people, this is a three-day weekend filled with chocolate bunnies and, and peeps and coloring and, and egg hunts and, and, and I get all that. I'm not, I'm not you know, uh, against any of that. I think it should be, we should have fun with our kids and coming together and doing some of those things. It's unfortunate uh, that the weather conditions didn't allow us to do that uh, yesterday, but I know that they're having great time in kids' life today and we look forward to next year. But how many know that this is a time for us to gather with family and friends and not just visit the church with a cute, you know, children's program and, you know, but, but really we come here today to celebrate our risen Savior, the King of Kings, come on, and the Lord of Lords. And I know for a lot of people it's just, you know, an, an extended weekend and they get this extra holiday and, and then of course our government's trying to change our holiday into something else and, you know, changing this weekend to something else. But that, that's why the Bible says pray for your leaders, right? Pray for those that are in government. But how many know, it doesn't matter if you try to change the meaning of this day. For every single day of the year, we give God the glory for resurrecting from the dead. This is just a time for us to gather together in community and be able to do that. And um, man, I'm stoked to have my family here with me this morning. My, my sister and my nephew and my, my grandmother who just turned 96. 96 years old and all my family here now that 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 woman right there I mean she married a a, a matador like she married a bullfighter and uh, so she doesn't put up with anybody's bull and I'm just gra I'm grateful to have my grandmother with us and of course my family it means the world to me but as we think about today and we think about what today represents you know it it really is an incredible day because all, history is divided into two different sections, B.C. and A.D., before Christ and after his death. And I just really want to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus today and tell you why we celebrate the way that we do and why we honor this weekend in the way that we do. Um, because, you know, one of life's biggest question is, is there life after death? Is there life after death? I'm, I'm afraid for what happens after I pass away from this world. And the reality is, is that Jesus has taken the sting out of the idea 
of perishing because we know that there is life after death because Jesus proved that he is the resurrection and the life and he came to give us life and life more abundantly and so I'm excited just to, to look at scripture today and just unpack some of these beautiful biblical truths that apply to each and every single one of our lives as believers in Matthew chapter 28 the scripture records this and you got to get the picture before I, I read this this portion of scripture now Good Friday just happened last a couple days ago the week before a couple days ago it was Palm Sunday where everybody was shouting Hosanna 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 in the highest and then on Friday we know that he was betrayed and we know that he was scourged and we know that he was mutilated and and we know that they crucified our Savior and, and put him in an empty tomb, a borrowed tomb. He didn't even have a tomb for himself. But then on Sunday, there were guards posted around the, the tomb where he, was, where he was buried in. And the women of God came to visit the tomb. And when they visited the tomb, they had an encounter with two angels from heaven. The Roman guard was just knocked out, but these two angels from heaven were standing above the tomb. And when they looked at these women, they basically said, what are you doing here? They're like, well, we came to see Jesus. And they're like, he's not here. He has risen from the dead as he said that he would. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Run fast and tell his followers that he is risen from the dead. He is going before you to the country of Galilee, and you will see him there, as I have told you. And they went away from the grave in a hurry. They were afraid and yet had much joy, for they ran to tell the news to his followers. Let's bow our heads for just a moment, and we give this next 33 minutes to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for all the saints that are in the house today. Thank you for all the beautiful families and children that have gathered today to celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I just pray that our minds and our hearts are open to your living word. Father, that we would receive instruction in the way that you presented it in your word. And God, we just pray that you are glorified as you are with us all today here in this sanctuary and in the overflow room and even online where everybody's watching us from. Lord, we pray that your hand would be upon this service in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Come on, can you just take the next 10 seconds to give God some praise, to thank him for his resurrection and life. Come on. He is risen. This is the proclamation of the angels from heaven. What, who are you looking for? He's not here, for he has risen. Many have asked, why was the stone rolled away? Is that for Jesus to, to break out of that tomb? And I would say, no, it was for us to be able to look into the tomb and see that he's no longer there, that he has risen, that he is Alive, And as Mitch said so well earlier today, that without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this would just be a dead religious service. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead, then the reality is, is what is our faith founded on? Because Jesus rose from the grave, you and I can be reassured that he is exactly who he said he was. And that he came to do what the Father sent him to do. And that is to destroy the work of the devil in your life. To give you a hope and a future by way of his salvation. His death, burial, and resurrection made it possible for you and I to be reconciled to God. Because when he cried out on the cross to tell us die, 
It is finished. This was a banking term that helps us understand that the account has been redeemed. It's been paid in full by the blood of Jesus on Golgotha. And now Golgotha is no longer described as the mountain of the skull, but it's the place of Calvary where Jesus rose again from the grave and where Jesus conquered death so that you and I can be given eternal life. But why is this so important to us? Why do we celebrate this in the way that we do? I love Paul the Apostle's letter to the church in Corinth when he said this in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he prepared, he appeared excuse me, to Cephas, and then to the 12. And after that, he appeared to more than how many people? 500 brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. He, then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. We've been given historical evidence, biblical evidence, evidence and archaeological evidence that Jesus did walk the face of this planet, that he did die on an old rugged cross on that hill called Golgotha, and that on the third day that he would be resurrected from that tomb. Jesus conquers the tomb. He removes the sting of death, and he answers the age-old question, is there life after death? He answers that with his resurrection. And so as believers, there are a couple of things that I think we need to celebrate today. And for some of you that are new to Christianity, that you need to know. Number one, that Jesus defeated the grave. And because the grave is defeated, so shall you and I conquer and defeat the grave in our own personal life. Now we do know that our bodies will at some point expire, that our soul lives on forever. The question is, is where will your soul live for all of eternity? Jesus makes it clear in scripture that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will be given everlasting life. And so death and the grave are defeated because of the resurrection. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 42, so it is with the resurrection of the dead, what is sown into the ground is perishable. He's talking about our physical bodies. But what is raised is imperishable. He's talking about our spirit. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body that will spend eternity somewhere. And for the believers, for the Christians, for those that have accepted the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we know that when we finish this life, we have an eternity with God our Father. Somebody say amen. Amen. But the Bible says that we're perishable, that we're sown in, in, into being perishable. That means from the time that we were born, we all have an expiration date. But because of the resurrection of Jesus, the grave has been comfort, conquered and we are raised imperishable. We are born into this life as perishable beings. Hebrews 9.27 says it this way. It is in the plan that all men die once and that after that they will stand before God and be judged. In Isaiah 25 and 8, the Bible says, He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. And so can I just just encourage you this morning, since, since you decided... Since the day that you decided that you were going to surrender your life 
to the beauty of God's extravagant grace, to this gift called salvation. From that moment on, the Bible says that you were created brand new, that all things have passed away, all your sin, all your, your disgrace, all the things that would keep you far from God have been removed from you, and you have been basically grafted into the family of God. And because of that, you now become more than conquerors over the grave. Hebrews 2.14 says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared it in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Your physical body might fail. In fact, many of us woke up experiencing some failures in our bodies. It's like you wake up and you're like, oh my gosh, my back. It's like, what happened? Nothing. I just woke up. <laughs> That's all that happened. You might think that because of your age, you have more behind you than you do ahead of you. But can I encourage you this morning, if you're a saint, if, if you're a born-again believer, that you have an eternity in front of you. So you have more in front of you than you have behind you. No grave can hold the Messiah. No tomb can hold the Messiah. No government can hold the Messiah down. But Jesus rose again from the grave. He conquered it so that you might know that if he conquered it, you too can conquer it when it's your time to be with the Father. And he takes away the fear. Why do you think so many people in Jesus' day, when they saw him, that they went from being cowards who ran from the government, who ran from the Great Commission, who ran from who Christ discipled him to be. Why do you think that these men and these women were willing to lay their lives down for Jesus? I'll tell you why. Because they saw him risen from the grave. When Mary went to go tell the disciples, hey, he's not in the tomb. He's not there. He's alive. And Thomas, we all know, I think Thomas gets a bad rap. But Thomas comes in and he goes, unless I could put my finger on his wounds, I won't believe. And then all of a sudden, here's Jesus. He just shows up in the room. He goes, here, put your hand, put your finger where the nails went. Here, check out my side. Here's the scar. It was me. I did die on Friday, but I arose today. And Thomas began to shout, my Lord and my God. And these men decided to follow Jesus for the rest of their lives and laid down their lives for the gospel. Why? Let me tell you why. Because if I was given a commission by God, and I saw friends and family that were running into a, a, a house or a space where fire was engulfing it, I would do everything in my power to keep them from walking into that disaster. Amen? I would be like, hey, you don't want to go that way. That place has nothing but death and pain and shame. Listen, stay as far away from it as you can. But if I continue to see family or friends or coworkers or loved ones heading in a direction that's going to keep them eternally separated from the Father, do you not think that I would do the best that I could to tell you God's truth? And not only tell you God's truth, but if you reject it, I might even tackle you and say, listen, don't go that way. The only thing that's waiting for you there is an eternal separation from God. Jesus arose from the grave and death was defeated. Luke chapter 20 verse 35 through 36 puts it this way, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage and they can no longer die for they are like the angels. They are like, they are God's children since they are children of the resurrection. We've been grafted into the family of God to live in all eternity 
with the very manifestation of love himself, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we can't gloss over the hard truths that we know in Scripture. Bible's, Bible's very clear. Paul wrote to the Roman church, and he writes in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, he says, The wages of sin is death. Payment must be made for the sin of this world. And the only one that was able to make that payment was Jesus. But not only did he pay that in full, but he also gave you and I the right to become sons and daughters of God. He also gave us a life, a new life, but not just a new life here, but an eternal life. Because he says, again, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, the Son. How many know that we are a, a, a dying race living on this planet? If one thing is for sure, especially as Californians, death and taxes. That's, that's unequivocal. That is for sure. Every human being at some point is going to expire or pass away. In fact, I, I think that there's only two people in all of Scripture and all of history that never tasted death. One was named Enoch. And the Bible describes him as the friend of God. And the other was Elijah the prophet that before he turned over the ministry to Elisha, the, the new prophet that would come up into Israel, that a chariot of fire, the Bible says, would come and pick him up and Elisha would receive a double portion of, of an anointing. But those two men are the only men that have ever not seen death, the sting of death. But here's Jesus. Not only does he resurrect Jairus' daughter, not only does he resurrect Lazarus, but he himself is resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit in him. And because he was resurrected to life, he now holds the keys of life and death. This is why Jesus is so adamant about saying, listen, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one goes to the Father except through me. There aren't many ways to God. There's only one way to God, and his name is Jesus. The Bible says that one day every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't know if you know this, but anybody who's ever started any other religion, they're still in their grave. They're still in their tomb. But guess what? God's not dead. He is alive. And he resurrected from the grave to give you and I eternal life. He didn't resurrect to give you religion. He resurrected to give you relationship with the Father. Psalm 90 and 12, it says, teach us to understand how many days we have. Then we will have a heart of wisdom to give you. And teach me to understand how many days I have. Then my heart will be a heart of wisdom unto you. It's sad. Life is indeed short. But we won't be here forever. I won't be here forever, and neither will any of you. But one day, one day, we're going to be able to celebrate this eternal life with Christ in heaven. And I don't know about you, but I want to take as many people as I can with us. I want to populate heaven, and I want to make sure hell doesn't get God's creation. I, I, I think that we should be passionate about loving people into the kingdom through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? That is the, that's the mandate of the church, to reach the lost with the gospel. The church has no other purpose but to reach people with the gospel and equip people to reach people with the gospel. Come on. We all go through negative seasons in our lives, but... If I'm going to pay attention, if I'm going to take on the word of someone that can talk to me about eternal life, I want to hear it from the person that died and rose again from the grave. I want to hear it from that place of experience, from that place of understanding. But the truth is, is that as human beings, we all go through difficult times. 
we'll all go through the valley of the shadow of death. And guess what? There are a lot of people that fear that season of life. But the reality is, is that for the believer, for the saints, for the sons and daughters of God, the reality is, is that because you have Jesus, you have eternal life. There are no second chances when we pass. There are no do-overs when we pass. You don't, you, don't, you don't pass away and then become a butterfly in your next life. Your next life is either going to be in heaven or someone or somewhere far from heaven. I heard, I think I heard Mike Miller say this one time, and I love the way that he said it. He said, you know what makes hell, hell, is the absence of the presence of God. That's what makes hell, hell. But what makes heaven, heaven, is the presence of God. Is our creator, is our savior. We know that there is no other way to the Father, except through Christ Jesus, the Son. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 says, I am He, this is God, I am He who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forever. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. I love that. I hold the keys. When Jesus conquered the grave on Easter Sunday, He came out holding the keys of death and Hades in his hand. In 1 Corinthians 15, 55, it says, O death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God that he gives us the victory through Christ Jesus, the Son. Amen. Death, death was defeated means that we don't fear its coming. In fact, many even welcome it at times. We don't fear death as believers. It's not the end for us. It's the very beginning of the reward that God has established for his believers. John eleven twenty five 25 says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. No, the one, I'm sorry, the one who believes in me will not, in me will live even though they die. Second Corinthians, Paul the Apostle writes this to the church in Corinth. Chapter 5, he says, For we know that if this tent, our earthly home is destroyed. He's talking about our physical body. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, for in this tent we groan. Oh, oh it hurts. Longing to put on our heavenly dwelling. Isn't, isn't that a beautiful thought that when you transition from this life to the next, that God gives you a heavenly body that will never decay, will never break down, will never be in pain, will never experience the hurt that it experiences in this world, but that you and I would be giving a new body for eternity. Revelation 21.4 says... He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Which means that God is establishing a new order of things. And so as believers, we know that death and the grave are defeated by the resurrection of Jesus. The second thing that we celebrate is that because Jesus conquered sin's dominion. So can we. So can we. Hear me clearly. Anyone who is in Christ Jesus has been given the authority and the power to overcome sin in our lives. Before Jesus, we had no authority. We had no power. We were living in sin. But because of Jesus... Jesus gives us dominion over our flesh. He gives us dominion in the spiritual realm. And now we are able to walk free from sin because of the blood that he shed. It washed, not only washed away the sin, but freedom comes by the way of the blood. No longer will we ever be attached to our sin, unable to break free from it. 
Paul writes to the church in Corinth again, so it is written, or, so it is with the resurrection of the dead, what is sown is perishable, and what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in, in a natural body, it is raised in a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Paul goes on to say that we are sown or planted or exist in humiliation and dishonor. Why? Because we all were born with this curse of sin. But because of the resurrection power of Jesus, we are raised in glory, free from sin. You don't have to be broken by your sin any longer. You don't have to live in the brokenness or the shame of your sin any longer. God says, all things now have passed away. All things now will become brand new. You are a new creation. And you've been filled with his spirit. You've been filled with his presence. You've been filled with the authority to say no to the things that are disobedient to God. When we invite Jesus Christ into our lives, we are more than able to conquer these things because Jesus gave us the authority to do so. The Bible is very clear that he came in grace and truth. Romans 5.17 says it this way. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. Talking about our greatest grandfather from the past, Adam. Caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live triumphantly, will live victoriously over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. I love that, that Paul says in Romans 6, 14, says, For sin shall no longer be your master. Think about that with me for just a moment. What are the things that had you enslaved? What are the things that had you in your brokenness? Paul says it very clearly. Sin can no longer be your master because you're not under the law. You're under God's grace. Do you know what that means? It means that because of Jesus, we've been given the power to overcome sin in our lives. We've been given the power to overcome temptation, the power to overcome ungodly desires, the power to overcome drugs and, and alcohol and addictions, the power to overcome broken relationships and financial bondage, the power to overcome every circumstance in this life because he has made you more than conquerors. Jesus made that possible. All power is given through the resurrection of Jesus. You'll hear this in Scripture. He says, if the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus lives in you, it lives in you, it lives in you, His presence lives in you, His love lives in you, His mercy lives in you, His compassion lives in you, lives in you. The authority to overcome sin in your life lives in you. Because you're a temple that belongs to the Father. Romans 8, 11, he says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead, watch this, will also give life to your mortal bodies through, the, through his spirit, who dwells in you. Before we were ever born again, we were dead in our sin. We were dead in our trespasses. We were dead and on our way to our second death, eternal separation from God. But because of Jesus and the finished work of Jesus on that cross and the resurrection of Jesus on that Sunday, you've been given the ability to have life and life more abundantly. You've been given the power to overcome sin. You and I don't ever have to fear death because we know that when we die, we'll stand before God and hear those beautiful words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into your reward. And my hope is that we get to see 
our loved ones that have gone before us that there will be a celebration in heaven when we all come together to honor our risen Savior. Aren't you glad that Jesus took the sting out of death? Aren't you glad that God made a way for you to live in eternity with Him? Aren't you glad that God's given you the power to overcome sin right now in this lifetime? The churches don't preach on sin anymore. They think it's too offensive. But can I tell you that it was our offense that put him on the cross. He, he took the wrath on our behalf. Without Jesus and his resurrection, there is no hope for an eternal future. All we have is dead religion. So as believers, number one, we know that death and the grave have been defeated and so shall we. As followers of Jesus, we have conquered sin's dominion. And third, in closing, Jesus conquered the grave and released grace to save. In John 1.14, the Bible says that the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father full of grace and full of truth. Truth and grace walk hand in hand. You might not like hearing the bad news. You, don't, you, you, you might not like knowing that if you don't repent of your sin that you'll be eternally separated from God. You, you might not like hearing those things. That God has made a way for you to be able to, to have salvation through Him and Him alone. There isn't any other way to heaven. That's why Jesus said, I'm the way. There's no other way. I'm the truth. There is no other truth. There's only His truth. And He is the life. Life more abundantly. Ephesians says it this way. Chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not a from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that anyone can boast. Let me, let me just say it to those of you that are new to Restoration Life or new to Christianity. In our own strength and in our own abilities, we will never be good enough to get ourselves into heaven will never be good enough. Doesn't matter what kind of a boy scout or girl scout you were or still are. Doesn't matter how much money you've given to, to you know, to poor people or, 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 or to help people around the world. Doesn't matter. Those are good things. Don't get it twisted. Those are really good things and I think we should still do those things. But the Bible said that it's not by works of righteousness. There's nothing that we can do that can be right enough for God in our good deeds or our, our works. The Bible said it's by His blood alone, which means the only way for us to experience salvation, the only way for us to be rescued from our sin is to accept the beautiful, gracious gift of Jesus. He loves you so much. He's not willing that any should perish. And for the joy set before Him, He endures the cross and its shame. I love that God is a God of second chances, aren't you? He can turn things around that seem hopeless. Good Friday wouldn't have been so good without the resurrection of Jesus on Sunday. And what seemed so hopeless that Friday afternoon was to become the greatest comeback on Sunday morning. Titus wrote this in Titus 2.11, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Let me say, that no matter how far you've strayed from the Father, no matter how long you've been living a life separated from Him, right now, while you're still breathing, it's not too late. There's still hope. God loves you. He loves you so much. And He's not willing to, 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 for, for you and Him to be separated for all eternity. And so He gives us His best. He gives us His Son that we celebrate today. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this, that if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone, say anyone, who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference 
between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, when Jesus resurrected from the grave, if you, if you read this in the Gospels, you'll find out that Peter made a massive mistake. When Jesus was arrested, that they came looking for all of the disciples and they found Peter. And they're like, hey, weren't you with the Messiah? Weren't you with Jesus? Like, no, 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 that wasn't me. And they asked him again and he refused to acknowledge Jesus again. And they asked him one more time and he acknowledged it again. I don't know this man. And then he heard what Jesus prophesied he would hear. That And so he goes back to doing what he used to do as a fisherman. Because he had denied Christ three times. But here's the grace of Jesus. He gets up from the grave and he goes looking for Peter. He finds Peter some fish making some fish tacos in the morning and he sees him and he says do you love me and for every moment that he rejected him he accepts him and proclaims him yes Lord I do love you then Jesus tells the disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 go into Jerusalem and wait for the comforter for the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit that's going to come upon you. And you're going to be witnesses to me or for me in Jerusalem, Judea, and the rest of the world. And they go into that upper room together, 120 of them. Interesting that it was only 120 of them. Because 380 of them saw him resurrected as well. But only 120 of them got together. And you know the story. power of the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They go out preaching Jesus and the church was birthed in that moment with 3,000 added to the kingdom that day. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. The empty grave is just a, is just a reminder of who we serve. We serve a risen Savior. As we celebrate Easter, let's focus our life on the resurrection of Jesus. And remember those three things. Every single moment of this day when we remember His resurrection. Number one, as believers, we know that death and the grave are defeated. And because Jesus defeated the grave, we are more than conquerors. So shall we. As followers of Jesus, we have also conquered sin's dominion over our lives because of the power of Jesus on our lives. And lastly, Jesus conquered the grave to show us grace. The immeasurable grace that isn't a license to do wrong, but it is an opportunity to make things right when we make a mistake or when we fail. Because as human beings, we all will. And I have two hands raised up saying, I fail as well. But God in His goodness and in His grace forgives us of our sin, cleanses us from unrighteousness, and gives us a new day with a new eye, with a new vision, with a new heart, with a new mind. And if I could for just a moment have every eye closed in reverence to God, I would just ask you, Are you born again? Do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? And if you don't, today is the day of your salvation. Scripture is very clear when it says that because He loved you so much that He wasn't willing that any of you perish, any of us perish. And so when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, what we're saying is we receive the beautiful gift of grace. 
that you showed all of us on that cross and that we believe that you died and rose again from the grave because based on all the evidence it's irrefutable you did live you did walk the face of this planet you did do miracle signs and wonders you were crucified but you were also raised on the third day and now you're sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven interceding on our behalf today grace is here for you today mercy is here for you and I wouldn't want to close this service without you knowing how much he loves you that he sees you in your brokenness he sees you in the darkness that you've been living in for such a long time he sees you with the affliction of your heart and maybe even the addictions that you deal with today the Bible is very clear that God can rescue you from your sin and he can give you a new life filled with new hope his presence his love and his mercy so he calls you home and if that's you and you would say pastor Eddie would you pray for me I want to accept Jesus today as my Savior would you just raise your hand all across this room thank you thank you thank you thank you hands going up on the balcony thank you thank you I see those hands thank you I see your hand but let's all stand to our feet today because as a church family and trust me when I say this if you've been looking for a church home well welcome home you found a really great family to be a part of you've, you've heard the term we love like Jesus and feel like family because we do believe that we are the family of God that we are brothers and sisters in Christ and that we're here to serve one another in love to encourage one another throughout this life to to equip one another in, in the call of God over our lives but if if you're here and you said man I need Jesus and you raised your hand right now would you just repeat this prayer after me and say it to the Lord because I really do believe that God is listening right now to the prayer that's on your lips and to the motive of your heart just pray this prayer with me we're gonna all pray this together as a church family say Jesus forgive me of all my sin I turn away from my sin I turn away from my past and I give you my life I give you my heart I give you my future fill me with your Holy Spirit embrace me with your grace with your truth Lord I believe that you died on a Friday and rose again on a Sunday so that I may have eternal life I thank you for that right now Lord God now fill me with your presence with your power in Jesus name I pray come on I want to welcome you home to the family of God this morning come on let's worship together Oh
before we close this service, just a reminder to all the ladies in the house that tonight at midnight, the early bird registration for Ember's Conference closes. So make sure you register for the husbands, brothers, uncles, dads, boyfriends. Register your loved one tonight before the registration ends. And if it is your first time in this place, we have a gift for you right outside the doors over there in the canopy. And also, um, if you scan the QR code for your next steps, if you've just committed your life to the Lord, or you want to know what your next step is here at Restoration Life, we got you covered. Just make sure you scan the code. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday. God bless you.